that we talk a lot about, you know, physical security. We know that we talk about cybersecurity, right? You defect you things. What we haven't talked a lot about is cognitive security. And cognitive security is what defense mechanisms have you got to ensure that the ideas that you have, the thoughts that you have, the beliefs that you hold um, are not, um, are not going to be susceptible um, to a malicious campaign to change them. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, it, cognitive security is something we've thought very, very little about. Um, and, you know, it's a hard one for a democracy to think about, right? Because, you know, the, the foundation of a democracy is, is the, the freedom of, of press, the freedom of ideas, the freedom of debate, the freedom to hold a belief um, that is different from someone else's. But at the same time, you're not free to hold a belief if someone else is manipulating your belief. That is not freedom. And if you don't take active measures um, to secure um, your thoughts, your cognitive beliefs, then you are susceptible. And I think the population is a lot more susceptible to cognitive information attacks um, than, than we give um, than, than, than we would ever imagine. And so, and how, the, how do you deal yeah. with this? Well, first we address it. I think uh, we, we need to be informed about this issue, and then we'll be able to make better decisions, yeah. right? Individual, yeah. because you don't want government to get involved. In this yeah, it's, it's interesting, right? So, you know, there's a sort of this sort of argument. Um, so, so there's an asymmetry, right? So, one of the things here is if you're an authoritarian regime that controls information. You've obviously got control structures. Your, your, you know, your ideology doesn't depend on the freedom of ideas and the debate and so on. It, it, it depends on different things. So you've got an advantage, right, in, in the information, the cognitive security space is that, you know, you can control information. You do control yeah. information. Um, whereas a, a democracy is freedom of ideas, freedom of expression, freedom of thought, and and any kind of government control on that is is um, is actually you know, quite detrimental to, to that set of beliefs. So what do you do when there is an attack? Maybe social media companies can identify those campaigns and announce that there is a campaign that was identified and maybe, yep. you know, describe yes, it what was. it is I mean, about. The people, they can read whatever they want, but at least they will keep in mind that it was artificially created. Well, it's very, very hard, though, to, to do a few different things, right? The first is um, that only addresses false positives, right? So I said this, but it's not true. It doesn't deal with false negatives, right? So what should you have told me, but I did, what should I have heard, but I didn't hear, right? Um, and so the absence of information, like the fact checking mm. doesn't deal with mm. the absence of information. The second thing is there are a lot of things in the world where it's not clear what the answer is. And you can't police every statement yeah. because we don't know the answer to everything. Yeah. You say, well, if someone says gravity is, is the result of the interactions of dark matter and, and you're like, well, I don't know, maybe it is. Um, we don't know. Um, and so am I allowed to hold that belief because we haven't proven it to be true? Um, it's like, so once you're into this kind of this, everything that you say is going to be fact checked. I mean, that's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Um, and so, and then if you, you know, say something, on Twitter, on X community notes, right? They're trying. Yeah, so so that's so the community notes is really interesting. The the other one is in Wikipedia, right? Where you have the community discussing, you know, here's why I believe this, here's why is there, and and if you go into kind of the basis of this, it's not the freedom to hold any belief; it's the freedom to change your belief, right? And I, I think we 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 talk about the freedom of speech, but I think what it really is is the freedom to change your speech and. Well, the freedom to change your speech means like, you know, it's also a responsibility that, you know, upon new information and new beliefs, you should change your, your speech. You should change your beliefs. Absolutely. And something that, that sort of got entrenched into kind of, I, I must have the freedom to hold the belief and never change it. And, uh -huh. you know, it's like, yes, but the real freedom here is, is, is to change. And, and through change means you can disagree and you can disagree with yourself. Um, but to do that, you need to engage in... Um, debate and you need to engage in um, new information and you need to engage in perhaps what I'm a different point of view. Right. And yeah. crowds can be very stupid or they can be very, very smart. There can be a huge amount of wisdom in crowds, but a lot of it depends on how you have them interact with each other. And, you know, the, 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 the wisdom of crowds works um, when people have access to different information and are able to form their own opinions without being kind of dragged along by, by um, what the majority um, already believes. Um, but these are also very, very susceptible to manipulation. And, you know, 
the beliefs that you have and the beliefs that that, that a, a society holds um, are very vulnerable. And and this is something that we haven't really thought about because democracy has never really been under attack, um, you know, in our lifetimes. Um, and we've never really had the the sort of the belief structure of a society being targeted um, before. Um, but there are certainly the technology and the scale of, of distribution um, in platforms like TikTok to run um, that operation. And if you can do it, you've got to believe um, that the, the people and the CCP are experimenting with this. And so, look, cognitive security, I think, is something we should all take on. As, and, and one of the bits on this is, you know, um, you need to know where your information is coming from and, and you need to Check know not... Check different sources, yeah. Yeah, but not just the information that you're seeing, the information that you're not seeing. Mm. And not just whether the information was true or not, but if I'm continually being exposed to a bunch of true information about crime in my neighbourhood, I'm going to think there's more crime in my neighbourhood. Whether or not crime has increased, if I'm seeing more of it being reported, I'm going to believe my environment is more dangerous. And, and it's not that the information was wrong, it was just that the amount of information that I'm seeing is mm -hmm. not consistent with the um, the view of the world that I should have. And so now you're into this thing of like, we're focused on is this right or is this wrong? But what yeah. you're really saying is the information I'm getting, what view of the world do I have? And now you come and you say, well, if the algorithms are serving this information up, what objective or motivation do they have? Now, in the world that we've been in, it's, it's mostly been to, to attract my attention and to get me to buy stuff. But that's because American capitalist companies have been running that, right? It's been Facebook and it's been Instagram and, and Twitter yeah. and so on. Now you've got Twitter being owned by a, um, you know... Elon Musk. Yes. Um, I was going to use some different words, but yes, um, Elon. <laughs> um, and he's got his own motivations. Um, you've got uh, TikTok, uh, you know, owned uh, ostensibly, um, you know, by, by a, a Chinese-based uh, Singaporean, uh, Singaporean-based Chinese leader but really being run um, by the CCP. Um, and, and now you start looking at and saying, well, what are their motivations and, and what, 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 what goals do they have? And very clearly some of the stuff is like, yeah. we don't want you talking about Tiananmen Square. We don't want you talking about a free Tibet. Um, you know, very clearly you can see that stuff, but what else is going on in that? And so I, th I, think, I think when you think about cognitive security, you need to move beyond misinformation and fake news and start thinking about, well, the information I'm consuming, who's controlling the algorithms that are serving this to me mm -hmm. and what motivations do they have? And then how am I building resiliency into that? And one of the ways to do this is, is, is to not use algorithms um, that you don't control um, because how could I possibly know of all the information that I'm seeing um, uh, on TikTok, whether or not this was uh, the, the right reflection of the world um, that I'm living in. The second thing is, um, so limit, limit the algorithms that are serving you information. Um, the second thing is, is um, you know, provide space for debate with people that disagree with you and engage and, 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 and have a reward structure that, that, that allows for common ground to emerge, right? So engage in debate, um, find, find environments that allow for engagement debate towards a constructive thing. And one of the things that Community Notes, um, Wikipedia comments page, is they actually have a, a, a community which has a reward structure, which is consensus. And when you get different people with a reward structure around consensus, um, you actually get interesting spaces. And this is what you get in scientific communities. For the most part, everyone that's in science wants to push knowledge forward. They don't always agree very much. They don't agree with each other. But there is a, there is a, a, a space where they say, we will come together with a shared goal of, 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 um, of a common understanding, even if we disagree to start with. And the final bit there is, is um, you know, I think decouple a little bit from the here and now. And you, you don't have to agree in the end, too, just to be aware of the different opinion. You can still hold your belief. Yeah, that's right. But you've actively got to seek that out, right? Because the, the way that these um, platforms are created at the moment is if you start coming into people that disagree with you, it's actually a very unpleasant experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so... This is this is X about again spaces. I think good X spaces that people speak live from all over the world. Yeah, this is funny. once you, once you put people live, it again it changes the dynamic. Um, again, 
Um, but the other bit here is, is most of the things that we get kind of worked up on today that create division um, on a long enough period of, of, of history are irrelevant, right? They're, they're just not that important. And one of the things to go back through and say, look, if, if I still like read anything about this issue in, in 50 years time, would, would, would a historian record this? And one way to kind of do that is to say, well, I, look, I don't know, I'm not sure. But what I do know is that people today are writing about history um, and I can go and read that and go and understand that. And I, I think one way to get out of or, or to kind of get out of some of this, you know, information, what is effective in information war zone um, is, is to go back and, and, and to go either into the future with science fiction or to go into the past with history. And, you know, Silicon Valley does a great job with science fiction. I think it, it you know, some of the, the, the best kind of ideas come from science fiction and we, we, we read science fiction vicariously. But what we do a terrible job of is history, all right? And one of the things that I've been fortunate enough to do in this last, you know, 12 months with, with some time and space that I've, 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 I've been lucky enough to have is just dive into history. And um, it's been... It's been wonderful to get to kind of, you know, I think you spend your time living at the kind of the bleeding edge of technology. But for me, um, I'm being able to go back and, and, and dive in, um, you know, to, uh, to history, um, you know, an older history from, you know, 500, 700, 1200, um, Western Europe, um, you know, it's, you know, southern, uh, southern Europe. And, Did you find and, something uh, surprising? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this, so there's a lot, there's a lot there, which, you know, we sort of have blinds, but all historians will also look at me as well. We know all this, right? But the technologists, we don't know this, right? We, we live in the future. So as a technologist coming back into the history, um, there's a lot of stuff to learn. But one, one of the things that was really fascinating for me was kind of the diffusion of information through time. And, you know, this, this, this sort of um, study, which has been very interesting of like, what um, original Greek text do we still have? Mm. And the answer is very little. Right, very very little Greek text is is, is actually survived the two thousand years, um, and the reason it doesn't survive is is because you have to continually write it, rewrite it. it has to survive a whole bunch of cens censorship, so people, um, particularly religious groups, um, fires, you know, wars, everything. Well, well yeah, Lots. wars, burning, looting, um, but also censorship. So you know, mm -hmm. you you've, you 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 get the um, you know. Uh, you get kind of the religious zealots come in and say, well, we'll no longer be able to think of this or see this, but it's got to be burned. And so that happens over a 2000 year period and you get a very small information that's kind of left. And what's interesting is what does survive is you see some of the mathematics survives, you see some of the astronomy survives, but um, half of, of all the information we've got is, is from a single writer, um, which is, uh, you know, Galen or Galen, Galen um, writes and it's medical. And, and what we kept was medical information because, you know, despite your religious beliefs, you still wanted to stay alive, to, you know, regardless of what you thought about the God and the afterlife. You, you wanted to be, you mm. wanted to be, um, you know, uh, so again, you, and with the mathematics you wanted with, with Euclid, you wanted your buildings to stand up. And yeah. with the astronomy of, of Ptolemy, you wanted to forecast the auspicious um, movement of the planets um, so you could kind of control your power. And so that information poems, stays. But poems, probably. Like but, love, but but love but all in, yeah. <laughs> because but they all, fall, fall in yeah. love. Yeah, all that's right. But then all the, all the, the tragedies and the plays and and um, all of that gets kind of banished because you know at different times it's not around. And so what's fascinating is 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 we think about this kind of transition that we're in now, which is information transitioning into these AI systems. And some of the lessons from this is that most information won't make it over a 2000 year period, most of the things that we write and create and, and make will not make it. And it seems very strange because we live in a world where we think there's an abundance of data and it's very easy to kind of move it and so on. But history tells us that most of it won't make it and it won't make it because not because it couldn't make it is because we don't want it to make it. And, and mm -hmm. we, we, we say like this information is censored. This information is not available. And we're in this thing where we're transitioning information uh, from the written form and the visual form into these AI forms. And, you know, I, I think, I think more, um, more should be done to study the lessons of that history. Um, as How we start do we preserve you know, something, you know? We want to, well, yeah. we want to leave some mark. <laughs> well, but it's not just preserving, right? It, it's you have to, because people actively go and seek out the information and destroy it. And, and so 
again, it's part of this dynamic where you, you move from a sort of an environment of safety into one of, of hostility. And when you, when you have a hostility-based mindset, you start thinking about security. And it's the same with the economy of security, right? We've been in a world where no one has really been attacking sort of the ideals of, and the ideas and the ideologies behind democracy. Um, but now that they are, you need to think about security again. And, you know, if you go back to the, you know, the, the reason we've got all these beautiful castles over Europe is because the nobility had to build walls around themselves to defend themselves. It's not because they loved the architecture. Um, at least early it, on. It, it was, it was because <laughs> they were scared, it they're scared yeah. and they, they needed to build security. Um, and they did that because um, you have the fall of, of, a, of an empire and you have the, the devolvement into, um, into different warring factions and there's no sort of, you know, control structure. And, you know, we, we're looking at an environment now where, you know, uh, the U.S. control structure is 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 um, fading, um, and or at least is losing appetite. Um, and you know, you need to start thinking about the security structures. And again, the one that we have today that that there hasn't really ever been a problem historically has been has been you know cognitive security. Um, but again, like part of this dynamic is like go and spend time looking at history. I mean, it's not that it. To go back to the early part of our conversation, it's not going to give you a straight line to predict the future, but it's going to give you some data points that you can draw some inferences from. And um, I think technologists, um, maybe you you, you know, rightly so, you, you know, we, we spend all this time focusing on STEM and, you know, getting very, very good at building technology. But 